Howdy my fellow wooden gassers. Here's a little old update on the Victory Gasify rebuild. It's uh, coming together quite nicely. What you're looking at here is the gasifier trolley, but uh, not the gasifier. <laughs> Here's the base unit that I made for it some years ago that extends the working lifespan uh, between um, cleanouts. And of course, this little bit right here is the bit that lives on the bottom of there to allow you to clean it out from below. Round the corner is where the gasifier is coming back together in bits and all pieces. In uh, recent days, I've added this picture frame sort of doorway. It's a uh, you could call that welding. It's basically condor poop and seagull crap disguised as weld. Yeah, I ain't the best when it comes to welding, but my welds never break. They just look like rubbish. Anyway, the idea is that this door, which just happens to fit on these studs, will be bolted into place, thereby making this airtight. And when service of the gasifier is required, which you'll notice isn't in there yet, one simply undoes this. In the past, I used to have to, used to, have to strip this thing down to the level you see it now. So I'd have to take it off the trolley, take the base off, and rip into it from below. Now, it's going to be more like Flash's gasifier in that it can be worked on while it's on the frame by simply undoing that there door. Like Flash's gasifier, it now has an outer barrel that is in no way permanently connected to the inner barrel. In the past, this thing had everything welded, so that barrel down there, with this one inside it, which was the interior of the gasifier we've all come to love and know, is now in three pieces. This bit will never be used again, except maybe to kick on it now, now and then to test my slippers to make sure they're still safe to wear. My plan now is with this flange that I've welded on is to basically drop the cylinder into place. It will be literally glued on using high temperature RTV. So it won't actually be bolted even though it has bolt holes here. I'm not going to use those. I figure the weight of this and the stickiness of the um, high temperature RTV sealant will be just fine and or dandy as the case may be for holding it in place. To extend the existing barrel, which never actually saw flame directly, this was part of the air preheat chamber in the very first rendition of this gasifier, it is now the hopper body. It means of course that it's bigger, so I've got more wood hopper space. If we take a look at this, you'll see uh, that what I've done is I've put this ridge on here, this uh, flange, and I've attached this uh, 9 kilogram gas cylinder barrel. Using an offcut from it, put on upside down, I've glued it back on using super duper hot melt, more condor poop welding, and with pieces of it, I've made this satellite antenna. What it does is it allows you to watch satellite TV and detect wood gas bugs while running the gasifier. Then when you're not watching telly, what you can do is put that on here and close him. I got the idea of this arrangement from standard uh, source pans. The lid fits onto the pan by way of a ridge that kind of centers it and guides it into place. So I figured on a similar principle to mount the lid onto there. Uh, I need to figure out how to make a hinge to allow me to do this sort of thing with it, but uh, that shouldn't be too much of a fuss. What I want to do is make it so as the hinge has a bar that runs across here that's springy. The idea being that when you go to close it, one hand is all you need to close or open the lid and then operate a catch that comes down on some sort of receiver here. 
being springy, of course, it should allow for puffbacks. <laughs> As wood gas bugs try to get out. <laughs> they ain't getting out. Once this is closed, they're staying in there and going through my engine. So that's the story of that. Now, oh good, it rings, so I can use it as a bell as well, a loud one I'll say. Let's take a look at the underside of this. What I've done is I've modified the flange that used to be into the, in this gasifier, the one that basically linked this and this and that. Now all it does is it fits on the bottom of this. I've installed a hole of the right size here to allow for the stainless steel parts that I'm going to be making up on the lathe in the very near future. And here, for your viewing pleasure, is the basic plan. So what we got is a gasifier that everyone is going to recognize as a flash of fire. We have our air intake and nozzle arrangement. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that just yet. But the interesting piece right here is this. You'll notice uh, it doesn't have um, what you might call the heat sink arrangement of a flash of fire. Instead, I'm going to be relying on the sheer mass of 316 grade stainless steel. This piece here, illustrated here, is 8 inches across and 5 inches deep. Solid stainless steel that I'm going to have to cut out using a sharpened screwdriver or something to give us this internal cone profile and an external one for that matter. Below is an 8 inch disc that this will be integrated with. There'll be a hole in here about 2 inches across. That's about 6 uh, inches across there. So you've got an inch wall thickness. Then there's another disc that has the same uh, restriction in it. The other disc, which just happens to be the bottom of the barrel that you are looking at. And the last disc with another cone attached to it, pointing down. Stainless steel again, machined in the same way to produce a cone. Uh, so we've got two inches and uh, two and a half ish inches plus about three quarters of an inch wall thickness either side going into our saucepan or whatever I'm going to use for a grate. The assembly will be like this. Basically all the bits and all pieces from stainless steel. So we're looking at about, I've uh, quoted the price on this, we're looking at $1,500 worth of stainless steel here. That there is a fair old bit to pay, but boy is this thing worth it, especially in winter when it's keeping the lights going and keeping my critters warm when they get in here. So, what that does is uh, it mounts to the bottom of the gasifier through these bolt holes here, eight of them, there'll be eight bolts at about this point here around the perimeter of the large disc. What that lets you do is literally lift it into place into the bottom of the uh, barrel that you've seen, bolt into place, locks there. And to seal it and also offer thermal protection, this area here, just as I've always done with my gasifiers, will be filled with ash and charcoal. That way the radiant energy from here won't be lost to the walls of a gasifier to such a great degree. Um, so as opposed to a heat sink, I've got me something that's like an engine that doesn't have a flywheel, can rev up real quick like, but stalls pretty quick, so you've got to watch out for that. That's stated though, there's a lot of thermal mass here, which will actually work pretty well uh, as a heat sink. So, the illustration also includes the door here that I've shown you, the bolts going through here and so on, the clean out port that I added to the gasifier in the early days of this thing. Um, talking of which, this clean-out port extended the run time between clean-outs from a mere 4 hours to 80 hours. Not bad, even if I say so myself. So, I've got all this sussed out. I haven't quite figured out how to do the lid yet. Uh, well, the hingy thing for him, but I'll get there. I always do. 
Uh, what I'm going to do, maybe is pause the video here and chuck this in there. You'll be surprised that it actually fit. <laughs> okay, give us a memento, my good friends. All right, the bits and all the pieces have been assembled. Oh, while I'm at it, here's my shaker. This is screwed into the side here, so when removed, it gives you access for clean out. So you can stick a poker in there and, and push the stuff out through the base of the gasifier. To make this work, I've got a 16 millimeter, close to three quarter inch, so steel uh, all thread here, a set of nuts welded through this uh, pipe plug thing another nut on here to center it so it becomes like a bearing for an axle that way you can do this sort of thing with it so uh, when screwed into place you've got that and of course this goes to the electric shaker motor to make him go auto magically now the luxury I'm going to enjoy when I build this thing up to completion is uh, surely obvious. As I mentioned before, I had to pull the entire gasifier to pieces in order to get to any of this. Um, and now I'll have access to the majority of all the bits. you got your chain hangers here, going down to a, a grate that's going to be down here somewhere, exact position, classified, it's a military secret until I figure it out. But the uh, idea is that life will become a lot easier once this is up and running. The high quality stainless steel ought to give me at least a thousand hours of new life for this gasifier. As over all this time the gasifier's out of shell has actually stood up very nicely as has most of the inner metal work except of course for the part that really got the job done. That there, see how mangled it is, was actually solid stainless steel. As you can see, it's slightly boogered. <laughs> That's why I'm making the module basically a dropout. Um, you undo the bolts and the whole jolly thing falls out and crushes your fingers. Well, actually, I better not. But anyway, um, that's the, uh, the theory. So once I've got the grate and everything else done, the shaker down here will be able to engage with it in some fashion to set it in motion. Right, so I've got a little satellite dish here that also detects wood gas bugs in place like so. I might put um, a fire door rope in that recess and make it so as I can raise or lower this on the hinge thing so as to be sure it comes in nice and level. That reminds me of something. While ga uh, Flash's gasifier um, was able to shut the engine down when he closed the air intake, which I'm probably going to put here, mine never did. It was so leaky that when I closed the door and closed the air intakes, the engine just kept on trucking. <laughs> um, not a good thing, but hey, I've got well over 1500 hours like that, so it could have been worse <laughs> lots and lots worse much like this excavator would have been if i hadn't taken ownership of it and chucked it under a cover for the first time in 20 odd years okay my good friends um hopefully i haven't put too many of you to sleep with my little old ramble here but uh fingers legs and eyes crossed in the not too distant future, I'm going to be reaching for the matches and setting fire to this thing. I reckon I should have it done, let's see, looking at my calendar, about $2,000 from now? Yeah. I mean, uh, a month or two from now? Yeah, same thing actually. But boy, is that going to be worth it. Okie dokie, my fellow wood gas bug bite neck nip victims. Have you a good one. Cheers and beers.